So, Saman, then we will directly start the next part. Uh, so, you are ready, I hope. Uh, last time we discussed uh, from uh, some, let me see. Uh, we discussed in the Papancha based on the Patapada Sutta uh, and uh, some others from uh, Uraga Sutta. I think we can start again from the Uraga Sutta so that uh, we are giving some emphasis to Uraga Sutta. So yeah, we will start from page 27, uh, Saman. Yeah. yeah. Um, from the start of the, uh, just after the first paragraph, Bante. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The Pottapada Sutta thus vividly portrays how one can step out, as it were, from the ambit of centripetal forces of Papancha, having gradually forced once away through the peripheral layers of the whirling, the maze of Papancha, where those forces are at their weakest. The close relationship between Vitaka and Papancha as well as the necessity of allaying them, allaying them seems to be hinted in, at the Uraga Sutta of the Sutta Nipata. It is noteworthy that the, that the refrain running throughout the Sutta of 17 stanzas em- emphasizes the fact that a monk has to quit all bounds both here and hereafter, even as the snake sloughs off its worn out skin. Now, Two of the unwholesome tendencies whose abandonment is recommended in the sutta are Vitakka and Papancha. They are referred to in two contiguous verses. Thus, Yasa Vitakka Vidupita Ajatang Suvikapita Asesa Subiku Jahati Oraparang Urago Jinnamiva Tap Tacham Purana, in, in, in whom all thoughts which have been concocted uh, con, within are burnt without residue, that monk quits bounds both here and hereafter, even as the snake its own its worn out skin. Yo natchasari na pachasari sabbang achagama imang papanchang. So biku jahati oraparang urago jindamiva tachang purana. Who neither transgresses nor lags behind, who has transcended all this conceptual proliferation? that monk quits bounds both here and hereafter, even as the snake its worn-out skin. One might note how harmoniously the implications of Papancha blend with the expression Natchasari Napachasari, as well as with the refrain of these verses. Specifically... Yeah, if we, yeah, one moment, someone. Now, this uh, two verses... Uh, talking on uh, Vitakka and Prapancha. So if you can remember some uh, information about the Madhupindika Sutta, so there it is uh, giving an interesting relationship that uh, Vitakka causes Prapancha. So uh, when one starts thinking, at the beginning it is uh, one's intentional participation, one purposely thinking, but later that uh, thinking process carries momentum, gathers momentum and ultimately it uh, develops to the level of conceptual proliferation, or in other words, the pancha. So at that level, uh, the person is very much become helpless, and uh, he basically become a victim of this uh, thinking process. We can say it's a kind of an overthinking, obsessive thinking, conceptual proliferation. So that is how we understood that how thinking, the purposeful entertainment of thinking ultimately become a uh, huge overthinking and it can even lead to some sort of a mental sickness. On the other hand, through the another sutta, that is Sakka Panja Sutta, we understood another relationship. That is where uh, various man-made products, how those man-made products are generating some sort of thinking. Because the, those man-made products are basically 
an outcome of papancha outcome of too much thinking so they started thinking they started imagining they started analyzing they started designing so likewise uh, those products basically have in all fair amount of human thinking so once they have produced so that particular product again produce again promote some sort of thinking so it's a kind of a uh, round where which the all the products that human have made tempts us to think on the other hand when we think it produces ultimately to the level of conceptual proliferation now in the uraga sutta these two verses yasa vitakka vidhupita ajjattan suikappita asesa so bikku jahati ora paran urago jinnam iva tacham purana so these thoughts are internally uh, thought about so various thoughts are there so internally one is uh, thinking to this direction that direction to with respect to the past future so likewise those were uh, concocted that means uh, all are very much like mixed up like you know the uh, decoction we are asaya in the decoction that we put so many things and ultimately we are boiling it for seven many hours and it can uh, over and over boiling ultimately that boiled decoction is what uh, one may take out so similarly internally when we start thinking so we are starting to that direction the other direction to the past to the future what we have seen what we have heard so likewise internally we are brooding so that is how the the vitakka ultimately can grow to the level of uh, which are, uh, this uh, papancha now all that what we have internally thought about are now abandoned vitakka vidhupita so that means they are very much like uh, burnt out they have very much like uh, pushed out and ajjattan sui kapita asesa sobiku jahate ora par now the, this man particularly uh basically abandon all that thinking so that thinking is very much like that uh, old skin worn out skin so this worn out skin in one sense we can say it's that uh, thinking the pattern of thinking that habit of thinking it's a harmless habit it's an old harmless hab- harm harmful habit it's an old habit that we all have and now he is trying to abandon it like a worn out skin and once he has abandoned it basically his mind become very tranquil calm relax so even there are no thoughts so like that the mind become more tranquil so and even one may experience no thoughts complete absence of thoughts complete inner silence also is possible on the other hand the next verse your nachasari na pachasari so that means once mind is not uh, involved with thinking about the past or thinking about the future so it is not lagging behind thinking about the past or not thinking about the future so basically it is very much in the present moment no pachasari sabbang achangama achagama imam papanchan so he has crossed over the the this sort of papancha the the state of papancha so bikku jaha tyora param urago jinnam eva tatam purana now here previously it is talking about the vitakka now it is talking about papancha so both are like worn out skin because those are our old habits so in vipassana abandoning papancha abandoning vitakka is one critical important part so if we haven't under, understood that that to maintain the mind in a more relaxed free uh, kind of a state that means actually uh, we haven't yet touched that aspect of our practice so it is quite necessary to uh, have that understanding we are uh, we are trying to keep our mind fairly relaxed free from too much thinking over thinking proliferation and uh, even if you have to think on a particular subject you are free to think you are allowed to think but you should have some control as probably we may discuss in the future about the skill that would the request us to or guide us to have in the vitakka santana sutta where you are very much like mastering this thinking process when it is necessary you can think 
but when it is not necessary unnecessary you can keep mind very quiet without thinking now one might not not how harmoniously the implications of prapancha blend with the expression nacha sari na pacha sari as well as with the refrain of the verses so basically so when we are continuing with overthinking it naturally might flow into the past it naturally might flow into the future so the second verse basically highlights that the one's mind is not now not following the past now not following the future so that is why even in the other suttas like say for example badhegata sutta atitang nanvagami nappati kanke anagata yadatitang pahinangta appattancha anagata so buddha emphasized that atitan nanvagami don't uh, go after the past it has gone it is the past atitan nanvagami nappati kanke anagata yadatitang pahinangta appattancha anagata so the future hasn't come yet so why are you spending so much of thinking about the future future hasn't come yet and past it has gone now you can't correct it now regretting lamenting crying or having some uh, restlessness is basically wasting of time because now that particular event which has happened now you can't correct so basically that sort of an understanding helps us to uh, maintain mindfulness develop mindfulness so that is very much the basic establishment of mindfulness we are we are using maybe either body or feeling so whatever that object what we call the primary object to minimize its uh, thoughts with respect to past and the future uh, okay someone we can continue from that specific instructions for the elimination of prapancha by controlling its gateways of vitakka vichara may be seen even in some of the most elementary et- ethical teachings of buddhism for instance at the level of sense restraint enjoyed enjoined for the monk it is said that he should not dwell on the general or special characteristics of the data of sense experience let lest unwholesome mental state should flow into the into his mind and uh, and how o king the bhikkhu guarded as to the doors of his senses when o king he sees an object with his eye he is not entranced in the general appearance or the details of it he sets himself to restrain that which might give oc- occasion for evil mental states Convet- convetousness convet- convetousness and dejection to flow in over Covet- him covetousness covetousness and dejection to flow in over him so long as he dwells unrestrained as to his sense of sight he keeps watch over his faculty of sight and he attains to mastery over it and so in like manner when he hears a sound with his ears or smells an odor with his nose or taste a flavor with his tongue or feels a touch with his body or when he cognizes a phenomenon with his mind he is not entranced in the general appearance or the details of it this appears to be more or less the ethical statement uh, statement of what was philosophically stated in the formula of sense perception in the madhupendika sutta the influx of evil mental states tend to overwhelm the monk who is lax in sense control and thus brings about the subjection to papancha sanya sanka the fact that the seemingly simple ethical injunction given above has deeper significance would become clearer when we compare it with buddha's piti exhortation to bhatiya darchira as found in the bodhivaga of the udana this exhortation so no, one, one moment uh, saman so uh, we can uh, now come to another area so how one can minimize prapancha how one can minimize overthinking so that is one another strategy is the self restraint sense restraint now there are six senses through the eyes we can see various 
sight. Through the ears, we can hear various sounds. Through the nose, we can recognize various odors. And uh, through the tongue, we can recognize various tastes. And through the body, we can recognize various uh, tangibles. And again, uh, through the mind, we can know, we can cognize various mental objects. So this is how we are dealing with the outside world. Now, when we are dealing with dealing like this, so assume that of a situation where we are careless about our senses. We are not careful about our senses, so we ignorantly use those senses. Now, suppose one is looking at the news continuously. In one channel, you are looking at one type of news, news and you switch to another channel. Again, you are looking at various other side of news. So likewise, assume that you are a person too much worried about the latest happening of the earth. Now you have not only your country news, you may have some world news. All that what you are doing is watching many different kinds of news. So what is going to happen to your mind? So what are they generally showing? So they generally show maybe about the murders. They generally show about say, mass raping situations, group raping. They show about mass shooting. They show about the wars. They show about the battles. They show about some sort of, uh, say, uh, flooding or, uh, say, bushfires, tsunamis. So all that they are talking is the mostly the no negative things. So if you are too much uh, watching this sort of uh, programs, so ultimately you become depressed. So your mind becomes completely depressed because you understood, okay, this, this world is in complete chaos. And your mind also, after fair association of all that negative uh, news, ultimately it also becomes kind of depressed. So that is where actually sense restraint is quite important. Even though we may have a TV, even though we may have access to the internet, so if we are not having any kind of a restraint in our eye faculty, ultimately we are the ones going to suffer. One may be addicted to maybe pornography, one may be addicted to movies, one may be addicted to cartoons, one may be addicted to maybe uh, video games. So likewise, many, many things are there nowadays and uh, handheld devices are there for you to chat, for you to communicate. So all that are taking our attention to the outside making us completely vulnerable. And basically, if you have no sense restraint, so all these uh, gadgets, all these equipments, all these facilities, infrastructure, ultimately does not prepare our mind tranquil. Rather, it helps the mind to become completely depressed, completely overwhelmed by too much uh, information. And that is where the sense restraint is completely important, extremely important. So we should understand, okay, even though my eye is healthy, even though I have a fast internet, even though I have the ability to look at movies, look at the, say, the TV, I should not overuse it. So it's ultimately, rather than become kind of an entertainment, it become a kind of a hindrance. It can become a complete uh, obstacle to our growth in the spiritual side. So understanding this, okay, one may be uh, putting certain constraints into your how you are using your eyes. Only some important thing that you are watching. You are not recklessly doing the watching of movies and etc. So basically you understood, okay, it may be a waste of time. I am completely uh, driven by those thoughts. I start become anxious about what's going to happen because of the too much watching movies, because of watching too much uh, news. So likewise, you understand the uh, repercussions, consequences. And so now you are very much careful about how you are handling your eye faculty. Similarly, how you are handling your ear faculty. So what are you going to listen? Even though you can hear many things, are we going to listen to everything? So what are we going to maintain our nose, I mean, for which purpose are we using it? Which For which purpose are we using our tongue? So even the taste buds are, you know, triggered. So are we misusing our tongue? 
there may be certain foods that I might not be uh, able to di- uh, sort of digest. There may be certain uh, unsuitable uh, kind of foods. So if I am simply become uh, greedy to them, so ultimately I am the one going to suffer. So likewise, you can think about the consequences of some misusing of these faculties and you are now trying your best to uh, have some sort of a control. This is not actually vipassana, we can say, but here it is the restrainment, sense restrainment. So sense restrainment itself is therefore uh, one method of overcoming papancha, minimizing papancha. So the the strong methods are there in vipassana, but here it's very much like belonging to the seal. So this is your uh, some sort of livelihood. So how are you maintaining your livelihood? And on the other hand, this is our Indriya Sangara, Indriya Sangara Sila, the, the, what we call the moral morality based on the sense restraint. So this is one part of our practice. Therefore, sometimes people are not, uh, say, concerned about this. They may use alcohol, they may use movies, etc., etc., but they want to quickly concentrate their mind. So they, that won't happen because you have engaged your faculties, your eyes, nose, smells, etc., which completely uh, uh, say harmful states, harmful state, harmful situations, and they maintain a suitable environment. So that is where the sense restraint is uh, quite important. And that is what highlighted here and uh, various suttas. And here actually in the Diganikaya uh, one sutta where Buddha explained this to King Ajasattu about in the in the sutta called Samanya Pala Sutta. And many other places also Buddha highlights the importance of uh, sense restraint and that sense restraint is critical, very important to uh, minimize Papancha. We can continue, Saman. Yeah, Bhante. Probably the uh, last last paragraph you can start with. Uh, from here, page, the, page the twenty-eight. Part. Yeah, yeah. The fact that the seemingly simple ethical injunction given above has a deeper significance would become clearer when we compare it with Buddha's pithy ex- exhortation to Bhati Daruchira, as found in Bodhivaga of the Udana. This exhortation, it must be noted, was so profound as its philosophical core that Bhatia attained emancipation. Bahia. Bahia. Bahia, Bahia attained emancipation then and there. It is, however, tantalizingly br- brief and runs as follows. Tasmatiya Bahia Evam Sikitabam Dite Dittimatam Bavisati. Sute sutamatam bavisati, mute mutamatam bavisati, vinyate vinyatamatam bavisati, evanti te bahia sikitabam, yato ko te bahia dite sute mute vinyate vinyatamatam bavisati, tato tavam bahia natain, yato tavam bahia natain, tato tavam bahia natat. Yato tavam bahia na tat. Tato tavam bahia ne nevid. Ne na huram na ube 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 mantaren. Eva santo dukasati. Esevanto dukasati. dukasati. Then bahia, thus must you train yourself. In the seen, there will be just the seen. In the herd, just the herd. In the sensed, just the sensed. In the cognized, just the cognized. That is how, O Bhatia, you must train yourself. Now, when Bahia, it is seen there will be there will be to you just the seen. In the herd, just in the herd, just the or in the herd, it goes on, just the cognized. Then Bahia, you will have no thereby. When you have no thereby, then Bahia, you will have no therein. As you Bahia, will you have no therein, it follows that you will have no here or beyond 
or midway between. This is just the end of or end of aisle. The Ill. first end of end of Ill. Ill. End of Ill. This uh, the first part of the exhortation presents succinctly the sum total of sense restraint, which the latter part interprets the philosophy behind it. The sense restraint consists of stopping short at the level of sense data without being led astray by them. He who succeeds in this thus truly comprehended the nature of sense data so that he no longer thinks he in terms of them, not ten, no thereby, not, not at the, no therein. He has thus transcended the super, uh, superstitions of the grammatical structure as also the verbal dictomy. Nevid, 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 na huram, na ubeyamantaren, neither here nor beyond, nor midway, in, nor midway between. In short, he has attained the goal. As for Bahia, he did attain the goal, and that almost instantaneously, since he had developed his spiritual faculties to such an extent in his own religious system that we are told in the Sutta. He even, entertained, he even entertained the illusion of being an Arahat before he came to the Buddha. The, uh, yeah. the... I think, okay, we'll, uh, we'll little go through that Sutta part also. This Bahia Sutta is very, very interesting Sutta. Probably you can remember how Bahia mis- misunderstood his caliber, his, his skill, thinking that he's an Arahant, but later... As a result of the, uh, say, Kalyanamitta, one deity actually, he uh, he uh, was able to convince Bahia that he is not an Arahant. Buddha is there, Buddha is available in the Savati, so he was able to persuade Bahia to meet the Buddha. Now he quickly runs through the Buddha. During that time, actually, Buddha was on arms round, so when Bahia asked the Buddha to preach him, so Buddha refused. Because while while on the arms round, Buddha usually do not teach. So he basically refused. For the second time, he requested. Again, Buddha refused. For the third time, he requested telling, so this life is very short. I don't know for how long I am going to live. I don't know how long you are going to live. So I need to know the truth. So please, please, Teach me the truth. So this is how the for the third time that he requested, he pleaded. And at that occasion, actually, Buddha gave this uh, very interesting teaching. So the, this interesting teaching basically starts with the very high-level high restraint. Actually, we just discussed about the restraint, which is based on the sense faculties. So we can have some sort of uh, sense faculty level restraint. That's again a moral aspect. Yeah, Indriya Sangara, we are trying to maintain. So even though, as we discussed, even though we have a, a working eye, though we have a healthy ears, we are not trying to hear everything. Similarly, the nose, tongue, body, mind. So we are very much have some sort of a control, some sort of a choice. Only the uh, harmless, useful, Things only we are trying to uh, associate, and if it is something harm, harmful, unnecessary, then we are not going to look at them, we are not going to listen to them. So likewise, so you are recognizing how your wholesome qualities are growing based on associating various kind of objects, sight, sounds, smells, tastes, etc. And if you understood, okay, why association of these kind of objects, okay, my wholesome power increasing, my unwholesome power decreasing. Probably we can associate. On the other hand, if we understood, okay, by seeing these things, by hearing these things, my wholesome power decreases, my mindfulness reduces. Uh, I instead I got a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of uh, doubts. I don't get enough atten- attention. So likewise, so you understood, okay, the the unwholesome qualities are developing. Then better we need to maintain sense restraint. The sense restraint is very important. But here in the Bahia Sutta, so Bahi is at a 
fairly higher level. So immediately Buddha gave that uh, higher level restraint to Bahia. So you got to stop, even though now you see. Now in the previous case, in the sense restraint case, we are purposely not seeing. We are purposely not hearing, not smelling, not tasting, not touching, not thinking, purposely. Understanding their harmful nature. But here, even when you can see, you are able to maintain mind uninvolved. Even you un you can hear, you are not allowing the mind to get involved, overthink, to mix up. Rather, even though you hear, mind remain calm, mind re remain tranquil. Similarly, uh, even though you smell, taste, touch, those uh, actions are going on, but mind remains calm. Similarly, there are various thoughts coming in, but you are able to keep the mind unattached. So you are not going to the papancha level. You are not going to the transgression level. You are not allowing mind to become overwhelmed by the sense data. So that that ability is available with you now. So that is that is the ability that Pahya uh, Dharachuri had. So immediately Buddha, without much talking about the sense restraint, he is giving this higher level, higher order type of uh, restraint where even though you can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, tangibles and again think, you can get various mental objects, but mind remains uninvolved. Mind remains by itself, maintaining seclusion. So if you are able to do that, then you can get a very interesting result. So the other point is, then you are natena. That means from what you see, you are not making a self. You are not making some sort of a recognition. You are not making any kind of a thinking. And if you are not there, then basically you are not there in. You, you haven't adhered to it. You haven't go inside it. So any kind of an absorption, any kind of a attachment, any kind of a grasping, none of them have happened. Because you have seen, but seen is merely seen. You are able to maintain the mind uh, unattached, quite detached, by seeing, while, while you, are, you are seeing, but the mind is unattached. While hearing, still mind is unattached. While smelling, tasting, touching, still mind is unattached, so you are not making a self out of what you have experienced. So similarly, you are not making a self thinking that there is an experiencer, there is a seer, there is a listener, there is someone who is sensing, or there is a thinker. You are not making a self even there. You, within yourself also, you are not making a self, an individual. So in between also, there is no self. So basically, this is the end of suffering. So you can see it's a very concise and higher level restraint that Buddha teaches to Venerable Bahir. And he was able to realize it. Not only that, he was able to accomplish it, live according to it, and he has attained Arhanship. So he is the one who has quickly attained Arhanship. To that level, his understanding was grown, his uh, faculties were grown. He was able to maintain this particular type of restraint, and he was so successful in it, so he was able to attain Arhanship. Okay, with that, I like to conclude today's uh, so, uh, this uh, book reading part. Now, I like to open the session for questions. Asarai Bante, we have six questions today. Right. Uh, question number one of six. This is a Dhamma Saman question. Dear Bante, regarding the exp excellent explanation last time, on Vinaya Loke Abhijja Dhomanasa verse as a preparation for one's attitude towards the upcoming Satipatthana practice, I have understood that the practice itself will adjust and guide our attitude as well, even if we get some aversion and desire arising from the practice. Is this a correct understanding, Bhante? With Metta, that's the end of the question. Uh, can you repeat uh, Chamila the question? Yeah. 
Regarding the excellent explanation last time on Vinaya Loke Abhinya Doma Nassang verse, as a preparation for one's attitude towards the upcoming Satipattana practice, I have understood that the practice itself will adjust and guide our attitude as well, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. if we get some aversion and desire arising from practice. Is this yes. the correct understanding, Bhante? Correct, correct. That is all. correct. Because uh, while uh, continuing your practice, you may, you definitely have to do the proper adjustments. And if you are putting too much effort, then you are, you need to adjust it. Then only your mind get properly concentrated. On the other hand, if you are putting too much uh, faith, that also has to be adjusted because uh, if you have too much faith, the, the, the wisdom part could be lacking. On the other hand, if you are feeling very dry hearted, then if you have some sort of uh, say um, uninterested kind of mind uh, lethargic mind uh, where there is no motivation and very dry so that means uh, faith has to be grown so likewise uh, you as you are more and more observing yourself slowly slowly you may understand okay uh, I have to adjust I have to do some refinements so that those will have to happen uh, on the way so definitely your practice will slowly do the slight adjustments. Question number two of six. This is a general question. Dear Venerable Sir, I heard someone who was who was born as a Trahetuka can only achieve Sotapanna status. How do we know whether we are Trihetuka or Trihetuka? If not yeah. a Trihetuka, what should we do? To become a Thaihetuka with metta, that's the end of the question. Actually, you don't need to think too much about this. And if you have an interest to uh, Dhamma, if you have interest to meditation particularly, definitely you are a Thaihetuka. So that means you have all the three uh, wholesome roots, Aloba, Adosa, Amoha, all three wholesome roots are there. So without much uh, doubt, you need to continue your practice. I mean, thinking about these kinds of facts actually uh, can uh, develop certain amount of uncertainty, uh, some kind of discourage in your mind. So that is not suitable. So rather, if you are able to uh, have some interest about them, particularly interest about meditation, that means you basically have the necessary skills. So you can continue. Question number three of six this is a general question. Dear Bhante, much merit for this program and helping us to build a spiritual life. I have been trying several years to gradually settle in a, partic- pra- in a practice of regular mindfulness meditation. Some months I feel really calm, relaxed and spiritual, uplifted by the practice. Many times I get swept away by lust, hatred, aversion and delusion. As Bhante explained many times, at least now we know this is happening and can make some idea of the magnitude as well compared to the mindful state. However, the frustration I have of getting carried away by Ragadvesha Moha is always there and times to a chronic level. I don't know if this frustration leads to and add more and more non-meritorious karma or is it something good and natural about Sansara Bhaya. Thought of checking with Bhante. Much merits. That's the end of the question. Yeah. So once you start watching your mind, you may understand, okay, it's, there's are heaps of uh, unwholesome qualities, heaps of defilements are there. And uh, that is not actually developed within this life. It is coming from many, many years. So that uh, our minds were overwhelmed by uh, defilements. That you understanding that actually makes you quite uh, sort of, we can say, uh, have some sort of self-compassion because there are a lot more to do, a lot of work to do and you have to purify your mind so that becomes your obligation. So now we have works to do. So basically the practice is guiding you and as you continue you may understand okay certain amount of refinements are now has given up or let go of uh, faded away and now I don't have too much of lustful thoughts, I don't have too much angry thoughts I'm not getting often carried away by Papancha. So these are the sort of good side of the practice where you are having some sort of a measure 
about the reduction of the uh, bad qualities unwholesome qualities so time to time we can do such kind of a reflection so as a result of the practice how much defilements have dropped out how much defilements have faded away is there some sort of a relief is there some sort of a lightness in the mind compared to the unwholesome qualities is there grown wholesome qualities say is there a mindfulness fairly grown now is there is there effort fairly available now is there any sort of uh, samadhi concentration available now do i have fair amount of understanding about the world situations about these various phenomena so that means the wisdom has grown so likewise so you can be happy understanding the development of the faculties saddha virya sat samadhi panya on the other hand the fading away of various defilements so that's the kind of a uh reflection that we can understand and uh, we can be happy with so time to time we can do that sort of a reflection therefore don't worry thinking that i have too many defilements heaps of defilement so that is uh, available true but now you found a method now you found a method to cut off the defilements overcome ignorance so therefore happily continue a path question number 4 of 6 this is mindful walking dear bante after walking practice i tend to think about how the observations happen and reflect on the state of the mind if i were mindful or distracted etc this sometimes happen during the practice as well my question is can one contemplate on past and future meditation objects as well or is it a must to pick present as and when it happen object is this something coming from the meditation lineage and theravada tradition with metta that's the end of the question so usually we are not taking any past meditation objects or future meditation objects uh, there are certain methods like paok methods talking about uh, recognizing one's past lives and uh, projecting one's uh, uh, concentration to the future lives those kinds of methods are there but uh, not commonly used in the typical mindfulness practices halipattana practices they are not employing any of these uh, situations rather the idea is to recognize all the present moment phenomena that is the one bringing us unhappiness this is the one bringing us suffering so if we are thinking about the past of course then can that can produce some sort of a suffering if you are imagining about the future that also can cause some suffering but you are imagining right now so why do you imagine like that why are you reflecting the past so if you are able to minimize as we discuss even today minimize wandering towards the past and the future as much as possible maintain mindfulness in the present moment so fair amount of uh, proliferation is cut off defilements are cut off cut off in the sense that they subsided because you are fully aware of the present moment and you have given enough prominence to the present moment so therefore in the vipassana practice we are more concerned about the present moment phenomena not about the past or future phenomena question number 5 of 6 this is a dhamma sermon question dear bante if the human made products embed potential for prapancha and thinking is it the reason that the blessed one promotes getting closer to nature can nature produce conditions for prapancha as well with metta that's the end of the question can can even nature can produce uh... potential to uh, papancha but uh, comparatively it is less so for example uh, you can see a waterfall while watching a waterfall you can think about okay how i am going to come with her to see the waterfall and how i am enjoying with her how we are having a bath so that kind of sensual pleasures you can imagine but the 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 what you have seen is a waterfall but you have taken it to the sensual realm you have taken it to the sense uh, sense uh, enjoyment but that is something unnecessary so if you are able to watch the waterfall with a silent mind that is the best you can do then you can actually see the beauty of the waterfall without promoting any kind of a sensuality that is where certain arahants have really enjoyed enjoyed or we can say appreciated the beauty of the uh, beauty of the uh, nature that is it so they they have they haven't uh, gone to the level of proliferation rather they simply 
have appreciated the presence of that beauty in the in the in the environment in the in the nature so therefore the nature itself doesn't have uh, sort of uh, any issue but ourselves if we are too much into the sense uh, sensual desires even some natural flower can promote some sort of a thinking it depends on the individual um question number 6 of 6 uh, this is a general question what is the reason or cause bante the mind wants to keep thinking and keep proliferating is it due to desires and cravings due to the three unwholesome roots of greed hatred and delusion mm. is it possible for the mind to be free from thought is this why buddha suggested sati with sati sampajanya all the time in the present moments yes yes it may yeah, very uh, Yeah, very correct. That's why. <clears throat> so as we are becoming more and more mindful, so we minimize unnecessary thinking. So at the beginning, we are using a strategy that is to use the body, maybe the bodily postures, maybe the breathing, maybe rising and falling, uh, maybe body parts, faculties, uh, say the elements. So likewise, many things are there attached to the body, connected with the body. So that becomes that helps you to ground yourself come back to senses to minimize proliferation so the body awareness again and again helping us to uh, ground ourselves earth ourselves so that uh, we can minimize uh, proliferation so we have that tendency to proliferate that is that is something as a kind of a trait we all have so that trait is what we are recognizing understanding its uh, repercussions trying to minimize it by means of uh, paying attention to the body or bodily phenomena later actually you don't need uh, always using the bodily phenomena but you can even use maybe feelings you can recognize your thoughts themselves itself and you can confront thinking you can confront various thoughts and ultimately they may disappear you can have a thoughtless mind you can have a silent mind you can enjoy that inner silence so those are the gems of the vipassana practice so you can uh, enjoy those uh, very beautiful peaceful states of mind that there are no thoughts even there is no agitation complete tranquility is there so that is where the you may understand okay what a kind of a potential we have as humans bante we have come to the end of the written questions right we have uh, so uh, we have about 10 minutes but uh, i think there's a, is there a retreat i'm not sure can we Or if there is some someone who want to raise a question, we can give a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Please raise hand on Zoom. You can unmute you. There doesn't seem to be anyone. Sign so answer. Right. Raise okay. hand. So we will end the program then. Uh, so to end the program, I would first like to pass our merits and thank Bante for his valuable time, even with the busy schedule at the monastery. to all the supporters of this program both seen and unseen and to the participants for joining today to practice and share their questions sadhu 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 teruvan sarnai sir yeah teruvan sarnai teruvan sarnai